I've got something very special for you today. I'm joined by Joe Bagley from VMware, CTO of Amir. Uh, he, this is your 11th year of VMworld. VMworld is an upcoming event. There's a link below. It's free registration. You can learn all about VMware and that kind of thing. I still believe that VMware is on the leading edge of all the cool stuff with everything for virtualization. And so there's a lot of really cool stuff you can learn. But we're going to have a chat. So this is exciting. Thank you. It's great to be here. So I'd like to think we're on the leading edge of more than just virtualization, but we can talk about that. Yeah, no, well, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, 11th year. Now, you were we were talking a little bit before the stream, and you said something about Vegas, and it was like a rock star uh, kind of thing. You had, the, you had the rock star experience in Vegas at a VMware event? Oh, it's very funny because, um, yeah, my, 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 my first VMware when I joined over 10 years ago was, was way back when, and then I first was on stage in a, in a major keynote in 2013 with Carl Eschenbach and Kit Colbert, who's now our CTO. And, um, yeah, the scary thing was, imagine going on stage in front of 20,000 plus people live was just, you know, I've got, I've got a friend who is in a rock band and he always used to mock that, you know, I basically get to go on larger stages than he does. And yet he's meant to be the rock star. <laughs> uh, he's now been in front of larger stages, so he beats me still, but I won't tell you who he is. But yeah, it's, it was, it was a fun experience, quite nerve wracking as well. I, there was the big joke at the time that I was very brave because I went out wearing light colored, light colored chinos or slacks. And there was this, you know, what if you spill coffee on them before you go out? And I was like, I didn't even think about that i just thought they looked good so yeah it's a it's a it's a very special event it's a it's really cool to be in person with a whole bunch of what feels like friends who just all want to be there and learn stuff and so it's been it's been difficult to do it virtual it's uh it's it's really exciting this year for vm world and all of the stuff that, that is coming down the pike it looks like for technology and uh you know we did some throwdowns on stuff so hopefully people will, will see that and check that out but i really do think that you know it's like maybe it's the year of the linux desktop but it's it's the year of you know the devops infrastructure as code it's going to finally be here I, I i don't know maybe i hope it is because it's really exciting and innovative and it's less work but i don't i don't know if you ask my friend Sean Bass, he'll tell you it's the year of VDI. It's the year of VDI every year, right? So we'll get to that one. But yeah, I think it's the year of a lot of things. I think what we're seeing is the maturity in a lot of areas. I think a lot of reality is sinking in. We're kind of cutting past the hype of cloud. People are realizing that multi-cloud is a reality. Not everything's going to end up in one cloud. We're starting to settle down past the hype of edge. DevOps is not so much the coolest thing anymore. People are sitting down and working out how we're actually going to do it and introducing security into that too. Um, you know, if you look across what we're doing in, in the developer space, it's, it's much more about the practicalities of a, of a multi-cloud platform and the tools that you need to get applications up and running on multi-clouds. And I think, you know, there's still that focus on infrastructure from people if they want it. There's still an awful lot of really cool stuff going on in infrastructure. But as, as our customers head up the stack, they focus more on what are they doing with their apps, where are their apps going next, and what are their apps going to be doing in three years' time. It's more interesting to have those discussions with them now on a, on a broader basis than, you know, maybe 10 years ago, we were reinventing the data center. And now we're reinventing the cloud. And I, I, you know, that sounds really cheesy. It sounds like some marketing tagline, but it's truly what what i believe we're doing in terms of how we're doing this well, i think uh, you know at least from i'm in, i'm basically a computer janitor so from the cheap seats from the peanut gallery if you will um you really sort of started to notice a change in executive attitude the last couple of years with the global situation it's like oh our it infrastructure is such that we can pivot and move to vdi and move some of our applications and scale things a little differently to deal with, you know, a workforce that's maybe working remotely or to deal with, you know, a different customer needs that we have because everything is everything is completely different. Yeah, it's been cool in a, in a really weird way because the pandemic should never be cool, right? But I think <laughs> a lot of people have, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, it's the ultimate proof of concept, it's the ultimate whatever. I think the bottom line is that a lot of what people said wasn't possible became possible because it had to become possible because there was no alternative. So a lot of that naysaying that had been said by senior executives or whoever in usually security departments or other in, in some organizations or finance departments that said this is impossible, too expensive, not going to work, or just those people that said we can't meet on Zoom all the time because it will never work, and, and people have, have had to. And I think the great thing is that we've been forced so far in some directions that we'll never go back. But in other places, we've been forced to a point where we've tried things. We've gone, actually, you know, that doesn't quite work for us yet. Maybe we need to pull back a little bit. So I'm looking forward to over the next 18 months, a lot of organizations finding that happy medium, not just for technology, but for literally how everyone goes to work. And I think, you know, that's a top topic for everyone. It's fun to watch. 
um, something that I've, I've, I feel like has been happening over this same time period is that we've had really incredible hardware and software innov innovation that drive some of those workloads. And so like, I, I'll give you some specifics. Uh, uh, people on our channel, uh, some of my early and favorite projects that I can't wait to talk about is running gaming virtual machines under Linux so that I don't have to deal with Windows shenanigans as much or whatever the anti-cheat kernel module has done to my kernel to make my system slightly more unstable. And it's like, do I really want to do online banking on the same machine that's got a, basically a kernel level rootkit? And so we've got all these projects, but now in hardware innovation the last couple of years, we've got interrupts that pass through from the real hardware to a virtual machine without the host knowing and, and now direct DMA and uh, things like RDMA for networking. So we've got almost bare metal latency from here to there. And, you know, it, it's, I'm sure there's a lot of software innovation on that side as well. Where do you see that going? Or have you, have you seen the same, same thing? Or is it just sort of, you know, bog standard pace of the industry? What, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, so in, in the office of the CTO, which is where I work, and specifically in, a, in sort of, you know, our, our research and innovation part, we're spending a lot of time looking at those really cool hardware innovations. You'd be surprised how many conversations I have around GPUs, DPUs, XPUs, FPGAs, and all those other wonderful bits and, bits and pieces. And, you know, right down into exactly what's going on with some of those technologies you talked about and how that's changing the fabric of, of, our, of our compute infrastructure. Because, you know, the world is changing from what they thought was, oh, well, you've got the x86 CPU and we virtualized that. So that's done. And now everything's going to happen above that in software. That's definitely not the case. There's some really, really cool and interesting harbor innovations coming on almost a daily basis. And I think, you know, when you look at also what's happening around some of the, you know, ARM-based chipsets and ARM becoming a little bit more of a serious player in the data center, much to, you know, some people's surprise, where it was, you know, just something that ran on mobiles originally. But, you know, there's massive change going on in what runs in our data centers. There's massive change in, in the harbor that's available to people. And so it's down to companies like us to make that software work really well with that hardware, to get the most out of that hardware and make that hardware available to as many people as possible. So a lot of the cutting edge sessions you'll see at VMworld will be talking about how we're doing exactly those kind of things. Yeah, and, and to, to break that down a little further, even like from a programmer's perspective or somebody that is trying to p practice, you know, DevOps and that kind of thing, you don't want your programmer to have to think about you know, in the beginning with the compiler, it was like alignment. You don't want to have to worry about alignment. You don't want to have to worry about which sort of memory copy you use. But now when we're working with multi-terabyte data sets, you don't want the programmer to have to think about, well, how is this going to scale from 8 to 64 cores or 1,000 cores? Or is this going to use this math kernel library? Or is it going to use that math kernel library? You want to give the developer the tools that they can do some, you know, some of the homework and the evaluation. But, you know, you guys have got to provide the software layer to make the hardware layer accessible because otherwise it's not good. And that was always the thing, right? Back to when we first started with Cloud Foundry 10 plus years ago, it was that command line where we can just scale it by 10 by typing plus 10, you know, or whatever it was, you know, that that's really what we've been trying to get to with, with that infrastructure as a code. And, you know, people keep bringing out new and cool hardware. We have to integrate that new and cool hardware into what we're offering. So it's, it's a constant fun challenge. It's, it's, it's what sort of gets you up every morning because there's some really cool new tech to play with. And I think that's really what we're all in this for. One of the one of the other fun projects we did was um, we were running some software in a virtual machine faster than you could run it on bare metal, and it's because the software was making some really terrible assumptions about like it was probing the hardware and saying, "Oh, I need to behave this way," and so we fixed it by lying to the software about what the hardware actually was, and so then it was faster in, in virtual machines, and that. That sort of made me think is like when you talk about the innovation and how everything is developing, it seems like building out these tools is actually shortening the life cycle of when you can actually take advantage of brand new hardware. So the virtual machines that you're running today, you don't necessarily have to make any software changes to whatever your awful application is that you did, but you can totally take advantage of all of the new technologies if you build on this on this stack. Well, and, and we do that, right? I mean, look at what we've done with NUMA and stuff in the past in, in our hypervisor. And if you look at what we're doing with containers, where we now support containers in vSphere 7, um, you know, where people always talk about bare metal containers, which actually what they mean is that's actually containers running on a Linux kernel. When when we talk about containers, we're now talking about containers running on our hypervisor on bare metal, so to speak. And oddly, they run faster on our hypervisor on bare metal than they do on you know Linux on bare metal, because we've been optimizing our hypervisor for sharing resources 
governance around thousands of things for a very, very long time. So, you know, we've been focused on that and our scheduler probably is a little bit better than others in, in doing that. And so, yeah, and for us, it's okay, well, what do we do next? And so now one of the projects you'll see at VMworld is has the ability to virtualize GPUs into containers, which is just so cool, right? So I've got containers. How do I attach GPUs into a container? Oh, that's easy. You just do it, click, click, done in software. Those are the kind of things we're doing. It's that flexible fabric piece. So yeah, as those new bits come in and people want to consume them in different ways, that's what we're focused on. And you can do that without having to necessarily update the latest and greatest software. You guys are handling that at a lower level down the stack so that, you know, the developers don't really have to worry about that nearly as much. And that's the really killer thing. And I saw that it was like, it was like 43% faster for some of the containerization workloads. You guys had savings for context switches. You guys had savings uh, for memory overhead. I don't know what you guys were doing, but it was unholy black mass. It's like, how is it 43% faster for some of these workloads? How is that? What That doesn't even make sense. It's, we have these moments in engineering where you're, where you're doing these tests and suddenly it's like, okay, that's that like you, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't even make sense to us. Why is it that quick? And you're like, okay, well, we're measuring wrong. We've got some other, you know, some counters wrong. The way we're actually doing the measurement is wrong. So we double check the measurement. No, no, we're measuring right. So then we have to almost backtrack and go, okay, what, what, why, what? Oh, you know, and you have this kind of, oh, okay. And that's happened so many times, I could tell you, in the, in the history of VMware, where you're going, oh, the, cool, you know, wow, all right, you know. So yeah, and, and it's really interesting that, you know, and, and someone goes, yeah, that's what we meant it to do. And you're like, okay, well, that's really cool. So I think a lot of people, they're, they're there is disbelief. There's even disbelief on our part sometimes. So, you know, you sometimes feel like a bit of a fraud when you go, oh, well, virtualize is faster than bare metal. And people go, yeah, right, whatever. You're like, well, no, no, honestly, it really, it really is. You know, yeah. <laughs> it can yeah, be the, because of, think about how these things work. The hypervisor has so many more benefits, even just like the benefit of a newer compiler. And it's looking at what your code is. And it's like, oh, this is this is how we did things in 2006. We don't do that that way anymore. <laughs> Yeah, so. and we're, we're moving that up the stack as well. So if you look at what we're doing in Spring, for example, it's just, okay, well, how do we connect Spring closer down to what we're doing down here? But more importantly, for someone using Spring, how do they get access to that stuff? So to your point, right, they just have more stuff up here in Spring they can play with. They don't have to worry about it. Yeah, this is what I think the, the future of these kinds of services are. And this is why I think some of the big cloud providers, the, their margins may be in trouble a little bit because the value that they provide is not the compute in the cloud on and the immediacy of that the value comes in the tool chain. But if you look at the innovation that's happening in the tool chain on what you can get in edge compute or what you can get real access to, that's a pretty good value proposition. Oh, there's some such cool stuff. I mean, and don't forget, we now have um, ESX for Raspberry, well, ESX for ARM, which actually runs on Raspberry Pi 4. So, you know, if you want to really play at the edge, you can really play at the edge with us and do some stuff in a really small way, but have the same operations model all the way out to the edge. So, you know, one day, yeah, we will probably have NSX for Raspberry Pi, which will be something quite awesome. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can, and that's a great platform to learn on. I mean, most people don't realize, but VMware actually has a bunch of these labs that are completely free. Like, you just sign up and you do the thing, and it, it's only pay for if you have an instructor that's actually, like, helping you do stuff. But if you want to go through these on your own with a Raspberry Pi or, you know, your home lab machine or your, your, your thing like that, it is a tremendous resource to learn not just VMware products, but, like, how this stuff is done in the industry. Yeah, and if you Google VMware hands-on labs, you'll, you'll find a link straight to VMware hands-on apps. And what that is, is, is all online, live for you to play. You can test drive any VMware product in minutes. So, you know, the stuff that people used to queue up and in, in line at VMworld to go and play with is now available online for you to play with anywhere you like. You don't even need your own hardware where you can come and do it on ours. We have it all set up to pre-configure, et cetera. So that's there to play with. And, you know, um, we have even better versions of that new stuff with VMworld. So, you know, we're here talking about VMworld. If people do want to register for VMworld, VMworld is free. So the general pass of VMworld is free. That'll get you into the general session, the solution keynote, the breakout sessions yeah and the link below there's over 1100 sessions this year it's all on demand there's some amazing stuff you can do and um it also gets into the demo zones and obviously these hands-on lab interactive sessions there is a tech plus pass which is 299 bucks and yeah that's if you want to do things like hands-on labs guided workshops where people will almost you have a proctor that takes you through what you're doing there and i'll meet the expert sessions and the tech plus tutorials and the odyssey hands-on labs and all these there's bits and bits and pieces additional there but most of what you want to get you'll probably find you'll get with the general pass which also gives you a 50 percent discount on uh, vcta exams as well so oh, that's a, nice exactly you know, and the tech plus pass gives you 50 discount on vcp and vcap certification exams so there's a whole bunch of things you can do so if you haven't registered for vmod yet it's free it doesn't cost you anything to register 
just register now, get your name down there, have a look at the content catalog, pick from some of the stuff you can do there. And, you know, it's nicely sorted by topic, which might be an easy way for you to find in, you know, whether you and what you want to do in like managing multiple virtual clouds, empowering frontline workers, or there's tracks around multi-cloud and app modernization, security, or whatever you want to do. So, you know, dig into that content catalog now, register, it's free, go for it. I would also add to that that even if you're not using VMware products or even interested in VMware products specifically, the tracks will teach you how to think about these kind of products. So if you work in this industry or you're a student, some of these tracks are incredibly accessible. They're made for somebody that was promoted into the position of computer janitor that may be a little over their head. So it's a very, very uh, accessible format in a lot of cases. And so you go through these and you start to learn the terminology and you start to have expectations for how your own infrastructure should work in your company. You're, you, you'll learn a lot and potentially save yourself a lot of future headache. Well, plus you'd be surprised the number of people that I talk to and still think VMware, all we do is a hypervisor. There's <laughs> so much more. <laughs> so even if you just come and attend some of the general sessions and find out all the stuff you're missing out on that you didn't know we did. And 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 also we got some cool guest speakers. We've got people like Michael J. Fox is going to be in the interview. We've also got, if you're a Peloton person, Robin Arzen's going to be on there. There's a whole bunch of cool people up there too. So it's going to be a fun event. Well, this has been awesome. Thank you for our quick chat. Check out VMworld. It's, uh, it's been awesome. Thanks very much, Wendell. It's so cool to be here.